Hello everyone, this is Many Ninja speaking. This video is actually picking up very shortly after the uh, review video I did on the bootleg X figures, mainly because, well, I have a pair of X figures which don't move too well. And that kind of bugged me, so I'm actually doing this video to kind of document my uh, processes of trying to fix it up so they can move a little more like the real deals. So, one of the biggest issues I had with the original toy was that uh, the shoulders barely moved at all. Basically, you can get some up and down movement or side movement, but uh, that was about it. So, one odd solution I came across uh, through a few different videos and kind of tutorials was to fix stuck joints like this. Dish detergent, of all things. Basic premise being, work the dish detergent into the joints that are kind of really stuck in there and start rotating them around a bit about how they should be moving, and slowly but surely they would start actually rotating because of the lubrication and kind of loosening any kind of stuck paint, stuck plastic, or whatever. And uh, as you can see, I'm applying that right here. What I will say, it took a few tries and a few different applications, but it really did start working in this case. Uh, in hindsight, which I'll be showing because, uh, as you can see, the toy started to come apart because it's not very well assembled. Uh, while I did learn a lot about how the toy got assembled here, I also would end up learning, which I'll be probably showing in a bit of a clip later on in this video, that the shoulder bits were incredibly loosely uh, attached there. Normally I think there's supposed to be like a partial peg keeping them in place on the shoulders, but that was not the case here. So it, if you get one of these yourselves, you can actually kind of pop the shoulders right off in order to get a more direct access to the joint than what I did for a good chunk of the while here. Perhaps the one saving grace of how kind of poorly assembled this toy was is that since everything is made out of a really soft plastic it feels like, it's malleable enough that you can kind of plug things in and out. Which, if you're doing customization work, I imagine will be a bit of a godsend for most of the things. The upper torso is going to need a little more work. I think that feels like one of the few really solid pieces of plastic other than certain limbs. But, in terms of all the middle stuff, you can usually pop it pretty safely off and you'll be able to work pretty well with it. As you can see, uh, the head pops off because the neck is also made out of a very similar soft plastic on there. Which also explains, uh, which is something I'm going to point out a little more later, how the neck part is actually pretty damn warped and actually has no movement right now. I kind of uh, learned later after playing around with the full armor X more that it should be able to have a little more movement there, but uh, right now it's got none at this point in the video here. Uh, fortunately, it's easy enough to pop back on, which is good because I have to do it quite a few times. This is me kind of taking a quick look to see exactly how the helmet and face parts swap in and out which will also make it easier to kind of display how exactly these things kind of pop in and out. What I will suggest in case the head does happen to come off on your case, you probably want to do what I did here and just pop it off so the main connector joint is what you're really kind of pushing in and just be careful putting that back in and then reassemble the rest of the head as it goes along. At least that's when I was doing it, how I had the best success of getting the peg uh, that kind of connect all the necks and uh, well the head to the neck and everything else kind of to get it back in place. As a general aside, uh, especially since I was comparing this with other more legitimate D-Arts figures as I was going along here, it's probably a little, a slight bit of a benefit in terms of modification purposes that the plastic that they use for neck and other things is so soft that you can literally just slip the things in and out because I imagine on the real toy it would be a lot more difficult in order to do this. You'd actually probably have to uh, mess around with a little more, little, put more pliers, uh, probably mess a bit with a heat source like a heat gun or a blow drawer for a more safe usage in order to get these things to pop in and out, but fortunately, I can just slip this thing in and out. It's around this point when things are really starting to fall apart that uh, uh, I kind of had a eureka moment when one of the shoulder pads finally came off. Uh, it turns out it was only really being held in by pressure instead of uh, propping, having a proper kind of a little pin that's supposed to keep it in place with the rest of the shoulder there. So once I was able to see that, I got a good look at how the shoulder joints kind of work. There's the ball joint that is kind of on the inside of the upper torso, though, and the rest of it is kind of more swivel joints as it goes along there. And I was able to see exactly how much flash was left over on the assorted ball joint and shoulder joint there. So once I had both of the shoulders off, which will be a little better shown in the next clip here, I was able to apply one more dish detergent in order to really smooth things out in a hurry. And with being able to get better access, that worked a lot better. And the other thing is, I was actually able to use an X-Acto knife to kind of uh, shovel in there and remove some of the excess flesh on the inside of the torso. Between the two, the shoulders now work a lot better than when they did when they started. 
and I can actually pose them properly. And they're still pretty stiff on that point, so they can hold their poses pretty well. A little too stiff on certain cases, but they move and they hold in place. That's the important part here. The other major change I made around this point was uh, I decided to take another look at the neck here. Once I compared it a little more with the real DR's figures, I realized I should have some neck movement period. It's completely stuck at this point. And the reason why is, uh, like I've been saying all along, there's a lot of soft plastic in use here. So what I did in order to kind of adjust that was uh, kind of a twofold thing. One, I used a heat gun to more seriously heat up the piece and kind of mold it or reshape it back into more of a cylindrical or a part of, not a cylindrical, more of a circular shape like the real toys have. Uh, we'll be showing the real one for kind of a comparison here. It's a more of a straight tube and not so much of an oval. And the other thing I did was on the bootleg, because it was uh, kind of more warped and needed a little more work, I also used that same exact knife to kind of shave down the side so it kept more of a circular shape. So at this point I have the two side by side. The neck movement actually is still a little stiffer than what the real toy has, but it had circular movement at this point in time. And there's a reason I'm saying at this point in time, which I'll point out in a minute. Uh, but first, here are the two toys side by side. As you can see, Fake X stands a little taller than Real X. It's probably because the joints don't sit as well, everything's slightly puffed up. This can be fixed though, but I'm just not doing it at this time. Now, here's where the screw up was when I was doing the last bit of the uh, neck adjustment here. Uh, in a bit of cleverness, I decided, okay, I'll take some paint and uh, not only apply a coat of paint that'll be better matching to the plastic pieces, I'll also do it a little bit to the shoulder joints or kind of the uh, little rim on the outside. Those parts stay fine, but where I screwed up here on the neck was when I applied some of this polyurethane finish at the end there, and when I added a few extra coats just to make sure I avoided any paint rub, well, let's just say I avoided the paint rub all right, but the problem I had is that I made it too thick. In case you're wondering what that ended up doing, it ended up kind of uh, nullifying some of the neck range that I had gone through the effort of putting in there so now the neck doesn't move as well as it's supposed to again. I undid some of my own work and a bit of cleverness there. All in all the toy is still moving a lot better than it did, the shoulders actually were changed, the neck is now give or take the right color, I got a decent color match I think, and it's looking a lot better. So in terms of a step one of getting this thing kind of up and running, uh, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. For the next video, I want to take a look at both the Buster Cannon as well as the Buster Shot attachments because right now both are a little on the useless side and well, if they included it, I want to fix that up. So, thanks for joining me for this video and catch you all next time.